Hola amigos, welcome to the Digital Nomad series with myself and the CEO of Luz Collective, Lucy Flores. In this series, we will do a deep dive of what it means to be a digital nomad. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Hola. Can you hear me? Yes. What was that? I'm coming to you live from Playa del Carmen from my Airbnb kitchen. People's lives are perceived a certain way through social media. And because we're working in the space, because you're building to, uh, you're working to build a digital media company around Latinas and our stories. What, what's that experience like to be in Playa, to be surrounded by beautiful things and then somehow disconnect from social media, even though you're leading this company um, to live in the, in the present and deal with your personal life. It's, um, uh, again, you know, it's, it's not, yeah, the, I, I obviously, tr I'm all, I'm a half glass full person that, you know, that's, that's always been my approach, but in terms of, um, where you are, you're always going to have to try to find the beauty, no matter where you are, certainly being able to travel and being able to live in different countries. And especially now during COVID, um, you're going to have to, you have other opportunities, but you still have to focus on, um, the things that you have available to you and that you could take advantage of. And certainly here, you know, during those tough times, that I was just talking about, you know, I would just, I woke up, I would wake up at dawn a couple of times and I would walk to the beach and I would just sit there and I would just take in the beauty of it all and remind myself that, that, you know, yeah, I might still have problems and I might still have issues and I might still have so many life stresses, but I also was, was intentionally reminding myself that, that we have so much beauty around us. And, and that is definitely a privilege that I recognize that I have, that I'm able to come here and that, you know, maybe others um, listening also have an opportunity to do. Again, it's different during COVID. You have to be much more thoughtful, responsible, careful, et cetera. It's not like you get this free pass and people who do travel whether it's for nomad purposes or whether it's for, uh, I mean, nobody should be vacationing right now. Right. Um, but if you're traveling, um, you know, you still have, you carry with you that, that responsibility as well um, to ensure that, you know, you're not carrying your disease everywhere. So yeah. lots of things to consider. Yeah. And so those are like deeper conversations we can have, you know, maybe on the next one, let's talk about like your, your daily things that you're, you know, that you need, that you use the, in the U.S., I think we take for granted the fact that maybe I run out of my favorite shampoo and I can go down to CVS, shop for it, and then, you know, it's, it's a done deal. Or I can order on Amazon if it's a special brand and I get it within, you know, the next day or, or whatever. What is that experience like in, in Mexico? Hi, Uriel. Thank you. Uh, just seeing some of these responses. Um, but uh, so the hilarious thing is that in the digital nomad community, because of immigration purposes, you do have to go back. You have to do what's called a visa run. So you do have to go back at least in Mexico every six months before your expiration. And now that the United States and Canada, which this is a good thing, have put in place COVID testing, you have to have a negative COVID test before you go back. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's creating like all of these, you have to plan ahead, essentially. Mm -hmm. So as people are planning ahead and coming back, um, they kind of offer themselves up as mules. And so you have, so people place orders with these people that are coming back from the, either going to or coming from the United States and they're loading up with things like deodorant or your shampoo or whatever, because there are a lot of things that you cannot get in Mexico. So, or, or whatever country you're in, or depending on what part of the country you're in, you know, you could be in a, um, you know, remote jungle area and, and not have what you need. I recently had someone bring me back a cord, uh, a um, charging cord for my um, electric toothbrush. Like, 
when my electric, when I realized I left the cord and I started brushing my teeth one day and realized that my electric toothbrush wasn't working, I was like, oh my God, what do I do now? <laughs> and then I like, it didn't occur to me that I could just move my electric toothbrush up and down. You know, I was like, That's you, so... you, you get so used to your yeah. luxuries, you know, I was just like, oh my God, how am I going to brush my teeth? And I was like, oh yeah, there's, you know, a toothbrush. You just like move it. <laughs> Um, so I, like, I searched high and low for this, uh, this cord, you know, Walmart, you name it, like every place that I could go to and nothing. So I finally got that. And when I got my electric toothbrush going, I, it was like the most, that was like the most exciting thing that happened to me this week. Um, that my friend hurts. who's, I saw my friend who's a dentist, uh, join earlier. If he's still on, I think he might appreciate that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> that, no, but that's hilarious. And that's the reality of uh, what you're living, right? A lot of commodities are a lot of luxuries that in the US maybe don't seem like luxuries, but they are. And you have to be creative about how you get it, you know, or, or and or the alternatives that you find. It's not always bad, you know. Yeah. Um, I ran out of conditioner a long time ago. Of course, they sell conditioner here, but I ended up finding this really, there's so many homeopathic and natural and small businesses here um, that you don't find in so many places in the U.S. Like everything is mass produced. Everything is like this is corporate, you know, it's global. And, and it was incredible also to be able to support a local economy in that way, you know, where um, there's so many things being made uh, locally with like, you know, natural and, and indigenous, like sometimes very long held um, you know, um, like medicinal practices, you know, you can buy those things here that you wouldn't, that you cannot find. And you, so it's the opposite too, you know, there's a lot of amazing things that you can get here locally that now when I do go back to the U S or, you know, once the pandemic is over, if I decide to move on to another country, um, that I'm not going to be able to find. So it's, yeah. it, you know, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm.